Matthew hasn't been washing his hands before patient care. Your first reaction may be to fire him, and you wouldn't be wrong, but you could at least let me finish recording this video. O okay, okay, stop pushing. Everyone makes mistakes, so you can't just fire everyone who messes up because you'd end up without employees. This concept has been known since antiquity. Some companies just straight up fire the bottom of the barrel every year. And that's fine if you're a high-performing, successful company. But guys, no one is lining up to work at your crummy nursing home. A better solution is to increase the overall quality and performance of your staff across the board, and you do that by making systems level changes. There's a concept in management called the 8515 rule that says that 85% of problems in the workplace are caused by systems issues. The vast majority of employees want to work and take pride in their work, so fixing a broken system and making it foolproof is the way to solve problems. The other 15% of problems are my coworkers. <laughs> fixing systems problems involves something called root cause analysis. There's no single method of doing this, but the first thing I'd recommend is that you dig out any policies and procedures you have, and then talk to the employees and map out the process in question. You may be surprised at what you find. You then identify weak links in the chain, and place them into broad categories. These are often represented visually on what are known as fishbone diagrams. You can make as many ribs as you want. These are just some examples to help you get started. So let's say we've identified a problem. It's too inconvenient to get to a hand sanitizer station. The next step is to keep asking why. Why is it inconvenient to get to a hand sanitizer station? Well, because there are only two on the floor. Why are there only two hand sanitizing stations on the floor? We remove the others because Jimmy was drinking hand sanitizer. Wait, why was Jimmy drinking hand sanitizer? Because it cures COVID. You can dig as deep as you like, but usually five whys are more than enough. These sublevels can then be represented on the ribs as, uh, I don't know, tumorous growths? Hold on. I'm just saying that fishbones don't actually do this, and we should find a more accurate name. Wait, why are you crying? You then identify a cause that you think will be a high yield target. For example, although I could use more hand washing education, this was thought to be low yield because apparently I've already graduated from kindergarten. Wait, when did that happen? So let's buy more hand sanitizer stations instead. You then set up a PDSA cycle and observe me for a few days or a week, not a year. You're doing small-scale quality improvement, not fermenting alcohol. And if your fix works, hey, great! If not, pick another rib and try again. Another word of caution. Some people say that the key to quality improvement is to find champions, exemplary workers with attention to detail who will catch all your mistakes. So I'm all about empowering people, and sometimes you do need people to hold others accountable. But guys, the whole reason why we're in this predicament in the first place is because of human error. So putting less emphasis on human intervention will make your system more foolproof and sustainable in the long run. So, say for example, you could assign Dr. Okamoto to follow me around all day to make sure that I wash my hands. But that's not a good long-term solution. She makes mistakes too, because, you know, she's getting up there in years, and she's probably on the verge of retirement. Lauren, how old are you?